Hey, you got dismissed from jury duty? Sort of. Uh, what are you doing? They finally got one for me, a Bloomberg terminal. This is a $24,000 system that gives me instantaneous access to all the financial information in the world. Do you know what's going on outside your door? It's not on there. When are we breaking in? When Max says so. No one here thinks you're an asshole. Really? I do. Way to be up fourth with Boston. I swear to God, my aunt Isadora, who's in a nursing home in Blind, called me with the news before it was on our air. Yeah, Mac allowed us to use Aunt Isadora as a source. What was that about? It's embargoed. Hmm. How was breakfast? Well, I left the tag on the clothes I wore to Brooks Brothers this morning. We're not good at this. And she tried to give me a message in a bottle. What was it? Merrill's media buyer is going to lose his job because he's been having an affair with his 24-year-old assistant who used to be a circus performer. Ah. Uh, that was an involuntary response you'd get from any man if you pictured a circus girl. Pictured her doing what? Why would she want you to know this? My guess is Goldman and Merrill are competing to do a deal and she'd like me to weaken the competition for her. The puzzle is who's buying who, and I like puzzles. No, you don't. I love puzzles. You literally talk back to the New York Times crossword. You yell at it. Can I tell you something about the New York Times crossword? Very often, they put the wrong number of boxes in to house the correct word. Yeah. But this one I'm going to solve, because I have my Bloomberg terminal. Tell me again what you get for $24,000 that I don't get for $1,500. You wouldn't understand. Really? You know how there are tall women who don't mind dating shorter guys? I don't mind that you're dumb, and Don, I mean that. Thank you. Can you tag Will out for a while? He's got to eat something. Jim will catch you up on where we are right now. Where are we? Exactly where we were 12 hours ago. OK, thank you. Savannah Capital. Yeah, you're supposed to be sleeping right now. I will, but Savannah Capital's in town. You want me to put a reporter on this? I'm a reporter. An investigative reporter? I don't want to take someone off something important. I can do this. I get information all the time. But you get information people want you to have. I'm going to call my good friend Lionel Barkley, CEO of Savannah Capital. And he's not going to tell you anything, right? I wouldn't think so. You don't want the CEO. You want a low-level guy who wants to impress you by demonstrating he's in the loop. I don't know low-level people. You teach. Isn't it possible one of your bloodless business students He's is a low-level analyst at Savannah? Yes, sir. Jacob Guidefreund sent me an email a few months ago. He'd been promoted from the mailroom. The result of a proper education. The $24,000 computer doesn't hold phone numbers? Savannah Capital. Jacob Guidefreund, please. Transferring. Very good student, but he likes puns too much. Well, praise his blog. How do you know he has a blog? My phone can Google things. I don't like puns. That wasn't a pun. I'm saying in general. Jacob Guidefreund's office. Hi, this is Sun Sabbath calling for Jacob. Just a moment, please. I'll see you. I spoke to a source at B of A, and he couldn't tell me much, but he did say the private equity is from out of town. Great. Good lead. Good work. You don't know what I'm talking about, right? No. My puzzle. Somebody's buying somebody. So I made a list of the out of town heavy hitters. Gary, TGP Capital, Oak Tree, Lone Star Funds, Golden State, Silver Lake, Sequoia. Yeah. I have a list of 24 private equity firms, and I'd like to find out if anyone has checked into a hotel in the last 72 hours. There are 106,000 hotel rooms in New York. No, they'll be staying at a high-end hotel. The Four Seasons, the Carlisle, the Regency, Ritz-Carlton, Mark, Mercer, Soho Grand, Gramercy, Peninsula. Yeah, I'm a little busy with Boston. I meant, you know how after a 16 or 18-hour shift you like to unwind with a little work? The tail numbers. What's that? They came on a private jet, right? Probably. They either landed at Teterboro or White Plains, follow the tail numbers. Decent tip. Mm -hmm. Decent. Sometimes puns can be punny. What'd I just say? Professor Sabbath. Jacob! You don't have to call me professor anymore. It's Sloan. Got it. I love your blog. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I didn't know you read it. God, everybody does. I was thinking about doing a 30 under 30 package for top analysts, and you'd be perfect for that. Wow. That sounds great. I'd love to. Yeah, is that why you're calling? Not this time. Right now, I'm calling because your firm is doing a media deal in town, and I wanted to see if I could get you on deep background. Hey, you're the one who told us in class that one of the perks of teaching is that you can cultivate young, unwitting sources. And that's you. Yeah, I, I know the deal you're talking about. I can't talk about it. You know, Sloan. Yeah. Are you seeing anyone? Nope. Well, I can tell you it's a big deal. You're going to be interested. How big? Well, I guess it's all relative. Hang on a second. He's using puns. He's talking about sex right now. That wasn't a pun. It was a double entendre. Thanks for holding. You mean the size of the deal is relative? Sure. Look, if you want to get together privately and talk about the 30 under 30 segment, uh, you mentioned. What's going on down there? A week down three to five points. According to who? Me. We missed the quarterly targets and buy a lot, but ended trading up one in three.
It was a pun. It's all relative. It wasn't a double entendre. It was a pun. Should I just stay here? No. Can she hear you on the IFB? No. Please, please, just pretend you can hear me. Copy, I can hear you. <laughs> but she did it. She felt my vibe. I think she can really hear you. It says baking news now. Fuck. Freedom won and not a bullet was fired. Let this day be recorded in the Your all- Your fly's unzipped. Not sure how I feel about new confident Maggie. She's looking good. I can still hear you. Do you think there's any chance she's, uh... I'm not pretending. All right. Close the books on that one. Fraternization between superiors and subordinates exposes the company to all kinds of problems, including the one you just saw. And we don't tolerate it. You're the EP of the 10 o'clock hour. I am. Which is sometimes anchored by Sloan Sabbath. Yes. So, if you and Sloan Sabbath were in a relationship, there's a chance we'd have to move one of you to a different bureau, D.C. or L.A. Yeah, but we're not. Are you sure about that? Am I sure? Yes. Yes. Because then lying about it would make it worse. Mm-hmm. Well, I can see that. My predecessor was pretty relaxed about this kind of thing, and we're already in a tricky spot with Will McAvoy marrying his EP, but no one's going to mess with Will, so... I guess my point is, if you're going to date a subordinate, you better have stronger ratings. <laughs> no, I don't see our ratings going up anytime soon, so I guess I'll just keep the company directory in the drawer. Okay. Okay. Can you tell me how to get to Sloan Sabbath's office? Back to the elevators, and it's on 22. Thank you. Welcome to the company. We're not dating. Okay. Position in your there isn't a position on this any more than there's a at least three jokes you would have killed. Those guys never use my jokes. You know why? I do. Speechwriter snobbery. I think it's something else. Mm. Taste this is fantastic. What is it? I don't know, I believe he's here. Sir, you really have to try this. Mm. Oh, delicious, right? Don! Oh. What a coincidence, seeing you together. Not really, the whole staff's here. It's a little bit more unusual that you're here. I'm a vice president at the seventh largest media company in the world. Why? thanks for dating. You and him? Me and you. Are you serious? Yep. Don and me? Have you Googled my romantic history? I date guys called Mr. Chairman. I date first round draft picks, high second round if it's a skill position. You think I'm dating the EP of a 10 p.m. newscast that barely outrates a rerun of Just Shoot Me? I absolutely do. And I'm gonna nail you. Charlie wants to see everyone in the kitchen and the rest end of the building in five minutes. Okay. See ya. Was that too much before? Got it from you, but... Listen, the new HR guy at AWM, Wyatt Earp. Not his name. Wyatt Gary. He's on to us, me and Sloan, and he wants me bad. He's gonna come ask him questions, and when he does, you say... Don and Sloan are just colleagues. Should you guys be standing next to each other? Yeah, what are you doing standing next to me? I really don't know. Scatter. Come in. It's from Don, and it says, take to Sloan, and then it says, Sabbath, in quotes. I was told to read it. Do you think it meant take to Sloan Sabbath? Was a new reason? HR guy just down there? Yeah, how did you know? It's his Instagram password. Nice try, but my mama didn't raise a fool unless you count my brothers. So I don't know what we just did, but I'm gonna go back to work? Yeah. Hey. We have a logic yeah. problem. Maggie, what's going on over there? His logic is inconsistent. How? He doesn't believe the source should have leaked classified documents. Neither do I. But he's unwilling to help law enforcement capture the source by identifying him. He can't. I'd be unwilling and so would you. I know. But following that logic, he should also not be willing to broadcast the story. If he believes no one should ever leak because it poses a critical threat, then why is he broadcasting the story? Well, I can't speak for Will, but I will. 
Uh, this leak, he believes, is a good leak. What he's very reasonably worried about is the bad leak, so he'd prefer there are no leaks. You and Will are making the same unilateral decision you don't want a leaker to make. I trust strangers less than I trust me. Your logic is consistent, though horrifying. No one's going to ever guess you guys are a couple. All right, listen. Listen up. He I just heard. Sorry, Bubba. Good afternoon. I'll tell you, Mr. Geary, this isn't the best time. You two are a couple. We're not, but maybe we can do this later. No, you are. I have a signed letter declaring that you are. It was sitting in my office in a pile of things I hadn't gotten to yet. Somebody routed us out? Yes. Nobody around here would drop a dime. You're blowing smoke. Who cheese? OK, Muggsy. You did. Huh? You did. Which one of us are you talking to? I think you know. What's he talking about? Sloan wrote a letter to HR declaring the two of you a couple. Yeah, it was after you made $125 on the Chipotle trade I tipped you off to. We spent the last two weeks trying to conceal from this man that we're dating, and the whole time you knew you'd send him a letter saying we were dating? Mm-hmm. Why? Well, obviously, I was hoping you'd never find out. But you knew he's going to read the letter eventually. Eventually is a wonderful time of day. This is a cross that bridge when we get to a situation for me. And here we are. We're at the bridge. Wyatt, is lying to corporate something you do habitually? Don and I like to make decisions about lying on a case-by-case -case basis. Maybe you've helped enough. Please don't transfer one of us. We don't work together enough, but the little we do works. And if you asked Sloane to choose between me and her job, you wouldn't be able to get that sentence out before she said her job. And I really like her, and I'm trying to be good enough. And this here is the best thing that I do. And can I say one more thing? It's just occurred to me that your company is only going to own my network until the end of the day. So what the hell has this all been about? Come to think of it. I'm blown away you let me do it this long. Why did you do it this long? Fun. I work in HR. Our days aren't scored by the hallelujah course. I don't know anything about the story you were all working on. But I know enough to say sorry. Good luck to the two of you. I'm a big fan. Put those Instagram photos back. Yes, sir. Why haven't we heard anything yet? The board's still meeting. Pruitt just walked into the building. He's an hour early. Yeah. What are you guys talking about? The Bloomberg Terminal will tell us everything we need to know. Bloomberg Terminal will tell us what's going on at Tony Todd's board meeting. Not a Ouija board. I wasn't. I was just, you know, praying. What are you two, um... Hang on. Their press rep just tweeted, exciting announcement about major media acquisition coming at 5 p.m. Go. Tell Reese. So, what's going on? We found a white knight. Antoinette Dodd's gonna buy ACN. Are you kidding? Hang on. No, seriously. Hang on. <laughs> How did you do that? Shit. What? This can't be happening. I don't know what you're looking at. Options on Halifax just started trading up. The Halifax, the Halifax group. group. Options... Fuck! She's buying Halifax! She met... I don't believe this. She met with us. She wanted them to think that she we was in... We will leverage. Damn it! I was just chewed out for 10 minutes by Erin Andrews. Why? She was accosted by paparazzi last night coming out of Man of Steel at the El Capitan in L.A. Paparazzi were coming out of the El Capitan? She, she was... was coming. She'd just seen the movie and waiting for her were a pack of paparazzi. Got it. Why was she chewing you out? I'm the one here she knows the best. Didn't she have an affair with Will? It wasn't an affair. Neither of them were married. No, that didn't happen. Will's in jail at the moment, and none of this is the point. The paparazzi knew she was in there because of our creepy stalker app. Mm. I'm coming to you as my superior, which I mean only in the sense of our organizational chart, and pleading with you to have what's-his-name... Bree. Bree, shut down the app. Max's been fighting that battle for six weeks. And what have you been doing? Just, you know, my job. Which should now include getting the assassin's helper taken down. I'm on it. When? Well, I'm in the middle of a tricky... Now. Right now. There you go. Excuse me, Bree. Excuse me. Hey, easy. I just wanted to talk to you about something. You are? He's Don Kiefer, executive producer. You know who he is. And you run our website until Neil Sampat's back. I wanted I'm to. I'm senior editor of ACN Digital. If you're going to be insulting, nobody wants to be insulting. I badly want to be insulting. Here's the thing. Sloan got a call from Aaron Andrews. You know Aaron Andrews? Yes. Yowza! I want to get with that so bad. I'll pass that on. I'm sure she'll want you to have her number. Hey, fuck you. Yeah. Oh, you can't talk to her like that, my friend. What's the problem here? Aaron Andrews got stopped by paparazzi last night coming out of the movies. I know. We've got it up. Now we're in Peabody Country. You're here to give me shit about the app again. Yes. Restraining order. 
Scum bottle guide, whatever it's called. AC Engage. It should be called AC Involuntary Engage. I'll bring that up at our next staff meeting. You guys like AC Involuntary Engage? No. It got voted down. Listen, no kidding around. You need to disable the app until we can figure this out, because it's a little not what we do. What's not what you do? Giving deranged people with access to semi-automatic weapons the locations of their targets, while simultaneously turning the rest of our brains into Wetina. That app's driving a lot of traffic. I don't care if it's driving in the Grand Prix in Monaco. I need you to temporarily take it down. Then permanently take it down. You need to speak to my boss. He's your boss. I'm your boss. Lucas Pruitt is my boss. I pitched him the app, and he loved it, which is why we have it. This is a warmed-over version of the same app Gawker had and took down five years ago. They still have a version of it, but this one's better. Look, no, you look. We're all a little tired of being treated like we're not Neil Sampat. I like my app, and it makes money, both of which are more than I can say for your 10 o'clock hour. So if you have a problem, and I got a hunch you got more than a few, why don't you take it to Pruitt? Beat him up. No. He's right. Yeah, he's what? About the last thing he said, about the last thing you said. We haven't been very welcoming, and in a weird way, we've been blaming him for Neil. If digital can help us, we should be supporting digital. That's right. Yeah. Come on the show and tell people about your app. Seriously? I'll ask Mackenzie for a block, and I'll interview you. All right. Awesome. The associate producer will give you the details. You should apologize. Sorry. To him. Habit. Sorry. Were you serious about that phone number? <laughs> Yeah, but I think you can do better. For real? I'm on it. Okay, so when you vivisect this guy, and especially his app, Pruitt's not going to be happy. I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. You usually blow up that bridge when you come to it. Would you mind giving me some space? I have a show to prepare. Sure, but this is my office. Yes, it is. Sorry. Hang on. There's an undergrad at Princeton who started a website for students who have been raped but who don't have enough evidence for the police to take action. Um, victims can go onto the site, either anonymously or not, and name names and describe their experiences. Pruitt wants the undergrad and one of the accused in the studio. That's a terrible idea. I know. Do you have a better one? Don't do it. Do you have a better one where I get to keep my job? <laughs> Charlie's going to back you. Charlie told me to do it. What's happening to him?